Welcome everybody, today we are in Beverwijk in Clubhouse, Pavel and Pingpong and we're going to do strategies to defend the Bagada and we're going to start right now. Pavel. And we have sales on just Pavel.com. I like it. You like it? Good yeah. match. There are many different bagadas. You need to come up with positioning tools in order to counter some of the bagadas. Most players that I see have the same positioning with the bagada every single time. They're not really changing up their positioning. And that's a mistake because if your opponent uh, has a very good bagada and you're not changing the position on their bagada, you're going to lose a lot of points. First is what kind of bagadas are there? Well, we made a video about the bagada, which uh, you can find on YouTube. Let's say you have a fast bagada, a slow bagada, a very angled bagada, so very short bounce, uh, bounce fence, bounce middle. So then you, or like a fibra bagada, then you have to know where you should position yourself in order to defend that specific shot. Because uh, if you're going to be very close to the net, when your opponent is playing a fast bagada, you're not gonna win all the points. You're gonna go to the dentist after the match. So that's not what you want. So we're gonna start off with the first position and that is the net hugging position. So if your opponent can, is very good in short angles, you should be super close to the net. So you should be as close as the net as this. So, we normally say in Holland, you put your, on the net, cannot say it of course, but that's how close you have to be to the net. So if your opponent is so good in those angles, you should be super close. Most paddle players are positioned far from the net when defending the bagada. They are around the second post. And you can see clearly that if you're at the second post, you're not able to defend the short angles correctly. So you're gonna be struggling. If your opponent is, has a more like a smash bagada or like a flatter bagada, they can make short angles. If your opponent is more into bandeja bagada style or like fibra bagada style, where the balls are quite deep, it would be a better to position yourself further. So this is the difference that you have. So you have to know what kind of bagada your opponent is playing so you can just adjust your position and just easily volley the ball back. Your own skills are also something that you have to be realistic about, which is the most difficult thing in paddle, to be realistic and self-aware. If my attack is better than my defense, I'm gonna be at the net defending the bagada. When I was playing with German, for instance, his defense is so good, he stays at the back sometimes. So if German and me are playing together, sometimes I go to the net and German stays at the back. And he is able to defend the ball behind me uh, in the middle. This works really, really well for him. Sorry, German, to tell your secret. But, uh, and for some players, they're not so good in defense, so they should always go to the net to defend that shot. So, Two at the back is situation number two, that you're both at the back to defend the bagada. If somebody is killing you with the bagada, they have super, super power strength, it might be better to stay at the back of the court. Uh, if you're good with the glass, behind the line is a good option. If you're not good with the glass, there will be another option um, that we'll tell you after. So if your opponent has a very, very fast bagada and has quite an easy rebound, or you're super good with the glass, you can just stay behind the line. And you can just use the glass and try to get the ball back, play soft on their feet again, and then play the lob. Because if they're at the net, or sorry, they're coming from the net to the back, they're playing fast, and then you can play back close to their feet, they have to run three times in a row. So this can be quite frustrating for your opponent. If you're just super good in defending, you're staying at the back, and they have to run everywhere. So this works really well if you want to, if you have an opponent that is not so fit, so you need to make them run, 
Uh, this works well if your defense is very good. This works well if you are lazy and you don't want to run. Situation number three is one in the front, one in the back. Parallel is at the front, cross courts is back. If you're doing this the other way around, this will happen and you will not be happy because the gap in between you and your partner is too big and you are gone. So always the player parallel should be in front and the player cross courts should be at the back. The player cross courts needs to have a good defense because it can be going quite fast, quite slicey into the corner, which is not a situation where everyone wants to be. When German was doing this, he's perfectly fine in the corner, so this works really well for him. For me, if I'm in Spain, if I'm playing against somebody that has this preparation and has a loose wrist and plays with super slice into the corner, I am not going to go back. I'm going to try to volley it. The volley is just a better option for me than defense. So, But if somebody that is not so good in the Spanish players, I might be lazy and go back. So this is your decision, but um, parallel in front, cross courts back, not the other way around. Situation number four is that the players are both, or one of those, are on the service line or one step in front. This could be an option. I, I quite like this because I am a slow player. I don't like to run so much. Um, so then it, it, this is a good kind of thing because if somebody has a very deep bajada and a very fast bajada, I can just volley it from the service line and then I can go back forwards. So if your opponent has a killer, killer power, service line, try that, or one of you. Situation and number five is that you're both around the second post, or one of you, but the second post is further. So this is also if your opponent has a very fast bajada, this is easier, but you have to be aware of the short angles. This is also for the service line or the one in the back. So if you see that your opponent is far against the glass and you play a bajada, the short angles are a very good option. But it can also be that I want you to play that shot. It's a very tight match and I just want you to play to the fence to, to make a mistake. So this can also be a trick. So changing the position uh, on difficult moments is gonna win you a lot of points because they're not sure what to do. You make them guess or find new options and that will help a lot to win a lot of points. So um, this works well if you have good follies, but you have to be careful for the short angles. Some extra bonus tips for the people that watch to the end of the video is that um, if you want to defend the bajada, you should need to have enough space in between you and your partner. Um, and you have to decide who's taking the middle which is one of the most important things. And I would highly, highly recommend that cross courts takes the middle. So if the player on the left side is going to play the, the bajada, the player on the left side is always going to take it with the forehand volley. Because especially I can play the ball into the corner and we are already in a good position. If my partner is playing the backhand and he's playing in the open corner, we have a problem because they need to run over there. So what I would always recommend is cross courts take the center. So if Bart is going to play the backhand bajada now, Nick is going to take the center because then we can go into in his open space. The bajada is a very fast shot. So it would be much easier to play the ball where it came from. So if, Nick, if Bart is playing the bajada now uh, to me, I'm playing back to him. If Bart is playing to Nick, Nick is playing back to Bart. Because if you need to make an angle at the last second, it's super complicated. If Bart is in front of me, parallel, I am always following Bart. So if Bart goes to the middle, I'm going to the middle. You need to dare to leave this space open. So let him play the backhand over there. He's gonna make more mistakes uh, than winners with that backhand bajada in that corner. And also I need to, make, to let him make a mistake. 
if Bart is closer to the, to, the, to the side wall, I'm going to be closer to the side wall and Nick is going to be closer to me to the middle. So what I would recommend is that you leave one and a half meter space in between, your, in, uh, between you and your partner. Thank you all for watching the video and I see you next Monday. Hasta luego. Ciao. Adios.